I like Microsoft. I also like Apple. Microsoft's good. Apple's A1. Apple's just A1 top tier. The Colt, they have Colt. They have technology. They have good leadership. They have <laughs> most. See, well, Steve Jobs came back and he didn't have a product, but Apple was 30 days away from bankruptcy. He did something I thought was so funny, but it worked. What was he it? He did, he like addressed the entire company. And he was like, and keep in mind at this point, Apple is, is really shitty. He was like, Apple is a great American brand like Coca-Cola or Disney oh. or Nike. And then he started like comparing <laughs> like Apple's impact to like that of Martin Luther King and Gandhi. And it's like, it like that's just such a, a Steve Jobs thing to do. The and branding, they, dude. All like, point. yeah, there he's literally like literally like they pushed him out. He came back and he's from that point forward, he was defining the culture of what Apple was gonna be. Yeah, like from day one. And then they made a fucking bitchin' product. I think it was in, it in was a commercial the- revolving around that too, of of putting emotional and like influential people in a in a in a commercial. So when people think of the brand. And you're onboarding onto your cult. They have emotion rather than anything else. You know, Martin Luther King used an iMac. <laughs> so you're right. I have a dream. Well, you know, you know, if uh, you know if George Washington was around, I'm just, I'm, I'm saying he wouldn't be on an Android at all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, fucking Gandhi used Apple Music when he was meditating. That that uh, that'd, be, that'd be a fun marketing thing. You, <laughs> that'd be a little like, there'd be a little backlash, but uh, you, you have like different products. Sorry. In the Apple ecosystem, and you have like those the old people from the commercial. Whenever there's an anniversary coming around, and you have them using it, it's like what Kanye did with Kim's dead dad. You think that was the point where Kim was like, "Nah, nah I'm, I'm gonna divorce this guy." <laughs> Kinda, and now she's fucking Pete Davidson. <laughs> yeah, that was. I saw that. Pete Davidson has like a like a nine inch dick. He's just depressed. Dude. <laughs> I was watching an interview. Just a tatted up young man. I was watching an interview he had with uh, with Charlemagne. No, was it Charlemagne? I think it was, was talking about Ariana Grande just giving him head. No, he's just talking about like, yeah, dude, super depressed. Definitely been suicidal, and he just didn't seem like a mentally healthy person. Yeah, I saw. I think it was the same interview where he was like, it was like right when he met Ariana Grande. He was like, yeah, I fucked her the first night. And Charlotte was like, oh, nice. She swallowed. And he's like, yeah, totally swallowed. I was like, bro, like, is she okay with this? Wa- I might have to watch that because a Pete Davidson plus a Charlemagne interview is dangerously funny. Dude. This is disrespectful. <laughs> Charlemagne. Yeah, she was, he was like, yeah, she like opened her mouth and it was all gone. Dang. I was like, Char- Char- Charlemagne just for going because he's probably just that way in person. Who the, hell, who the hell raped your sister? <laughs> But yeah, uh, the, my friends call that Forrest Whitaker eye. You know, the, the eye just kind of dangles like that. Who is that? With the... He's talking to For- Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> he was making fun of his eye, bro. I was like, dude. Not for him just going through with it. Because, like, I don't know, dude. He has to be like that in person. And dude. Not, not a radio character, but, like, he's just like, that's what it is, bro. That's who I am. It's good. You know, it's kind of like that, but not really. Fucking not as extreme, but Jimmy Kimmel. I saw like a thing of Jimmy Kimmel just being really very dry. Yeah. <laughs> fucking uh, Jonah Hill comes and sits down. And you know, Jonah Hill's like, he's like fit now. <laughs> and he says something like, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel's like, wow, you smell better than I thought you would. <sighs> and then fucking Jonah Hill's like, all right, I'm going to try really hard to not get offended by that right now. And then the whole interview is just awkward as fuck. Oh, man. I was like, Kimmel, Kimmel does it in a way that's funny because like y- he's buttoning up for, for network television. But there's there's just little things where you see shining through that are just like oh you're 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 wild aren't you <laughs> yeah it's just like bro it like, was dude, he he does it like from the perspective of like old stand up nighttime TV show still it's funny all those shows are like Craig I miss Craig Ferguson man I wish I watched it but uh, Craig Ferguson was just a fun experience dude whenever I see like a TikToker or a YouTuber on those shows, I'm just like, wow, what a step backwards. For I don't them. know if I've seen that dude. Like fucking, uh, I think one of the dancing girls on TikTok was on Jimmy something. Hmm. And those shows get like a couple million views a night, maybe. And her TikToks 
get like 50 million views each people got some people got phones in their hand man so it's like i guess i guess the whole point of it is for like the youtube clips later but it's like yo, how much do they need to be how much do they need to be paying these kids who make like 50 grand a day yeah like yo please come to our studio and film a thing for us to keep our show alive what which jimmy has the roots on uh, i think jimmy fallon is that his name um but remember when he was doing just games all the time um and people were like well, why are you doing games bro and it was just to transition to getting views on youtube is that what that was for i think so <laughs> all that shit sucks dude i hate late night it's interesting i mean oh, I no it has a niche and i'm sure people that I'm sure if I was in entertainment, I'd be down to do it for a couple of years, maybe. Oh, I wouldn't. You're Neil Patrick Harris. For a long they time. wanted Neil Patrick Harris to be one, and he would have been great because I think he's one of the most talented guys ever. But he was like, nah, I don't want to be doing this like for the rest of my life. I'd rather travel and like do Broadway and shit in movies. Another God, thing, Neil Patrick Harris is so great. Another thing that I've learned from other people, shout out Ian Dunlap, dude. And I, and I was I was working on this during talking to people in the summit. Always lead with how can I help? And I'm, I'm talking to this guy who worked for the summit, dude. He's trying to he's trying to out how can you help me? I'm I was like yo how can I help? And he's like no how can I help, dude? How can how, how can I help? <laughs> right? <laughs> it's the best thing. There's there's a there's a woman I was talking to who was like marketing for a project. And, and it was like the second time I said, is there anything I can do on my end to help you? And she was like, uh, I don't know. She said something like maybe just, I don't know. And she, and she was like, how, how can I help you? I, I kind of feel bad. And I was like, ha, yeah, dude, that's how it works. And then, uh, and then I told her the same thing of uh, the how can I help hack good edge to have when you're talking to people. Even if you don't want to help them? Um, it would be good to be genuine shit that i guess i'm never saying that <laughs> but you got you, you also I, I i i don't like helping people if i can't help them but if someone's like you always help somebody dude. there's always something <laughs> either if the, someone's like yo how do i turn my brightness up on my phone i'm like bro i got you don't even worry what else you need but you, if someone's like yo can you watch my kid tomorrow i'm like fuck off company wise oh company wise yeah. i thought just in general yeah i haven't i mean Yes, in general, but it's more of a networking half, not half genuine. It, it has to be genuine, but uh, yeah. How can you help me? You can plug my podcast on your but, verified Instagram. Yeah, but but you're asking, you know? I haven't really tried <laughs> with so, so many uh, with people on the street, but even that, dude, there's a, it's, there's a whole lot of humans that know a whole lot of humans, and then one thing goes to another, bro. It's, it's, the, uh, it's, it's the Zach effect you know it's just a whole lot of network and you just do things zach does know a lot of people speaking of networking i went out with uh sometimes i go out with my good friend chris daniels who we need to get on the podcast interesting guy uh dude i want to what was my question for him i had a, I had a few but yes one about next week two new weeks yeah maybe next week um and his thing is like normally i would like not really be into this what networking his thing is like when i go out i gotta like meet two people like just just two new people because he's like he's looking for people that'll like help him advance his film career and it fucking works like the fucking just random people like you met a producer who makes horror films and it's just like a lady you would never expect and he's like he, he like does this thing where he like pays money to like get into like have memberships for like exclusive clubs that's what a lot of people like, are doing with the NFT thing, man. Yeah. So I'm just like, damn, this is like literally the method that works. Because when the time comes, you need a horror film producer, you know who to call, you know? Yeah. If he, if he leads with, how can I, is there anything I can do to help you? Is you know, it's all over. Yeah. All wrapped up, dude. I wonder how long it's going to be until LA burns him out. <laughs> He's still excited. And I'm still like, ah. <laughs> oh fine hollywood fuck and god damn it he does he has a he has a very energetic personality so yeah that on top of like i kind of feel like 
he's probably going through what I felt when I first started partying really hard in college. Yeah, yeah. Just excited, but except he's in LA. Is it like party party stuff? No, it's just like he just wants to go out. You still gotta go out. (laughs) And that's cool. I I like that's that that's the game. Yeah. People 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 are the edge. Yeah. But I'm more like, damn, like when I'm doing it, when I'm like talking to people, like in a group with them, I'm just like, dude, I would not be here. Like yeah, I weren't trying to help my boy. But man, try to find a digital summit that has networking, man. 15, it's still a little bit detached from like real human connection. <laughs> but, uh, but man, is the people I talked to were dope as hell, man. And, uh, you, you'd think it, you'd think it's kind of like a little inhumane and like not like, but it's, it's, there's, there's cool stuff. But I'm sure personal connection physically is an edge over that as well. I can't wait till the metaverse is like, super immersive and you're just chilling get that dopamine hack dude let me read some, one thing about this dopamine. uh what will movies look like though hard Same? hard to not watch i mean like imax yeah it's probably it might be something to think about you probably have immersive movies more so like Fuck the it, instead immersive of video games lens flicks uh yeah, yeah, yeah. You could work it into, ooh, ooh. You could work it into, you could, instead of body wearing things, you work it into a building, uh, a movie building. Where you still go to the movies, but it's more immersive. Maybe everybody has their own pod. Or if you're going the video game side, because uh, there's a lot of walkthrough, like, like the like Last of Us or like Walking Dead video games or like movies, but you like press one button and then watch 10 minutes of screens. Um, you do that in buildings or you just rent the building, get an Oculus and be like, bro, this is my freaking metaverse place. What's good, bro. It's crazy. Can't During wait. a dopamine detox, a person avoids dopamine triggers for a set <laughs> of time. The dopamine requires a person to avoid any kind of arousal specifically from pleasure triggers. Anything that stimulates dopamine production is off limits throughout the detox. A person will feel more center balanced and less affected by their usual dopamine triggers. Important to note that a true dopamine detox, all tall dopamine, uh, unplugging from the world, dude. You reset your dopamine. I'm, I'm going to do it on like Sunday. I reset my dopamine by masturbating. That's just getting triggered by masturbating. It resets something. <laughs> Something's going on in there. It's a release of <laughs> dopamine, I'm pretty sure. But that means anxiety just gone. <laughs> that's uh, that's I think that's that. But now you're just addicted to that. I'm addicted to it like, for sure. But then you, like I said, is that the most productive thing uh, to get stress out? You get can you get stress out from another thing? And with my app, hack my brain. Uh, well, it's like I can only be my cocks five times a day, or about. So I guess <laughs> I guess I'll go exercise. That's too much. <laughs> Dude. That's usually that's usually how I get to the. No, I'm just kidding. I don't do it that much. No, only three. Only three. Relax. Oh fuck. 